This is section 11.4, and we're going to start to talk about just simple conditional, you know, and probabilities here. So we've got two objectives in this section here as we look at this. We're going to identify the sample space of a probability experiment, and we're also going to de determine the probability of a simple event. So this really is kind of a basic introduction to probabilities in general. Okay, so before we get started here, we've got some vocabulary to look at and discuss. Okay, so some vocabulary of probabilities. First, what does probability mean? Probability is the measure, uh, probability measures the chances a selected event will occur. Okay, so what are the chances that something will happen? The outcome is the result of a single trial of a probability experiment. Okay, the outcome is what happens if one thing, you know, whatever, when you do this one thing, what is it that you got? The sample space is the set of all possible outcomes of a probability experiment. The sample space is all of the possible ways or, that you could roll. For example, if you were to roll a, if you were to roll a 12-sided uh, dice, you could get a 1 through 12. That would be the sample space. An event. An event consists of one or more outcomes and is a subset of the sample space. So. The event, the actual one thing that you do, okay, in this case, is the event. It's part of the sample space. Probabilities are given a value between 0 and 1 or 0 and 100%. And we've already talked about this when we were talking about our standard normal distributions. Okay? So as you look at the chart down here at the bottom of this page, if you have, again, probabilities always between 0 and 1. If you have a zero probability, that means that it is impossible for this to happen. It'll never happen. Okay? Zero is impossible. Now, you see the scale between zero and one. Unlikely would be very similar to 0.25. Okay? If you have a, or, or in this case, 25%. If you have a 25% chance of something happening, it's what we call unlikely. That means it could happen, but more than not, it's not going to happen, okay? An even chance is 0.5 or 50%. That means you have the same amount that it could happen as it couldn't happen, okay? Likely would be 0.75 or 75%. Again, if you have a 75% chance of something happening, it's likely to happen, but it could also still not happen. Okay? And then you've got 1 or 100%. A 100% chance of something happening is certain that it's going to happen. There's no question. There's no way that it could not happen. Okay? So you'll be able to compare is it likely, unlikely, even, certain, impossible when you're finding these probabilities. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples now, some things you're going to see when it comes to finding things with probabilities. The first thing we're going to talk about is identifying the sample space. Remember, the sample space is the set of all possible outcomes of an experiment. Okay, so what are all the possible things that you could have happen? So find the sample space of the following. Rolling a die. Okay, if you're looking at a standard die, there are six sides. The possibilities of you getting, you could get a one, You could get a 2, you could get a 3, you could get a 4, you could get a 5, and you could get a 6. Any one of those are all the possibilities. That's the sample space of what you could get for rolling a die. Now, second one, letter B, tossing a coin and rolling a six-sided die. So if you look at tossing a coin, the chances of you tossing a coin, you've got heads and you've got tails. For rolling a six-sided die, you've got one, you've got two, three, four, five, or six. Okay? You can get any one of those possibilities. So we want to know the sample space for tossing a coin and then rolling a die with it. Okay? So as you look at this, you've got a multitude of possibilities here. You could have a heads 
with a one, a heads with a two, a heads with a three, a heads with a four, so forth and so on, all the way up to six. But you're not only going to roll heads, you can also roll tails with any of these possibilities. So a tails with a one, a tails with a two, a tails with a three, a tails with a four, a tails with a five, and a tails with a six. So that gives you the sample space of all the possibilities here. Okay? You'll notice as you look at there, there's 12 possibilities. Okay, 12 possibilities. Okay, so we've been able to identify sample space now. Now let's find simple probabilities. Probabilities of simple events. Okay? Probability is equal to the number of outcomes in an event. Okay? The number of times that you could do this one thing over the number of outcomes in the sample space. Or another way to think of this is the total number of outcomes. Okay? So, you roll a six-sided die. Find the probability of each event. Okay? A six-sided die has six total numbers. So the total number of outcomes is going to be six. So rolling a three, we know at least we have six chances. How many threes are on a standard die? Well, there's only one. So the probability of you rolling a three is one out of six chances. Letter B, the probability of you rolling a seven. Again, there are six possibilities. What's the chances of you rolling a seven? Well, there's no sevens on a die, on a six-sided die, so you have a zero out of six chance. Okay, zero out of six. Now, what's the probability of you rolling a number less than five? Well, the numbers that are less than five on a roll on a die are one, two, three, and four. Those are all less than five. <coughs> okay, so again, the total number of possibilities, there are six total possibilities. How many possibilities are less than five? There are four of them total. You could be any one of those four. And if I reduce this fraction both by two, you end up with two-thirds. Okay? So we've started to be able to find some simple probabilities. Okay, now we're going to continue to find probabilities, except for this time they give us a frequency chart. So, the frequency chart, these are the responses that you have here. These are the responses. This is the number of times that response came up. Okay? So you'll notice, as you look at this here, you can cross this part out. We don't need to worry about this. That doesn't qualify for what we need. Okay? But you'll notice the one thing that they have on here, that they do not have on here, is the total number of times something happened for everything. Well, in order to do that, I have to add up all my values. So I've got to take 406 plus 752 plus 316 plus 30, and my total, when I do that, if I add all those up, is 1,504. <coughs> this is the total number of times that the responses came up, okay, for all of them. Now, what's the probability of a positive response? So as you look at your chart, you want to know, okay, how many times did we have positive? We had a positive 406 times out of how many total? Well, that was 1,504 total. And when I simplify that, I get a decimal in this case, we get 0.27. Again, when you round your decimal in this case, I rounded it to the nearest hundredth. Okay, so what is the probability of a don't know response? Well, as you look at your don't know, Here's your don't know response. There's 30 total out of a total of 1,504, and that will give me a decimal of 0.02. Okay? And then finally, what is the probability of the responses not being negative? Okay? So again, here it is for negative. Right? There's negative. I want to know what the probability is of it not being negative. So I want to take 406, which is positive, add the 316, which is neither, and add the 30, which is don't know. That total gives me 752. 
So there are 752 responses that are not negative divided by the total number of 1,504, and this probability is 0.5, or essentially you have a 50-50 chance of it being negative or any one of the other three. Okay, so this is section 3.1 and 11.4 talking about simple probabilities. Okay, don't forget to complete your WSQ once you finish watching the video.